what that sound means. We are going to take a look out at what KPRC2 meteorologist Anthony Yanez is up to during his school visit this week. Yeah, this week he's visiting Bunker Hill Elementary School in Spring Branch ISD for his down. weather lab. Anthony and the students will get to experiment with the fun side of STEM and you can watch it right here on KPRC2 Plus now live stream. In Spring Branch ISD, I have some very special kids to introduce to you. We've got third graders, we've got fourth graders, and we have fifth graders. Can everybody say hi to our audience? Oh, this is great. Hey, okay, I have to tell you something. I have to be honest with you. That is the quietest but best hello we've ever had to the people watching outside. So thank you all the teachers who have invited me, uh, Gabby in particular. And so, hey, how are you doing, Gabby? It's good seeing you. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, you guys, we're going to talk about our weather today. And so most important about our weather today is what's possible for tomorrow. So you're the first class that I've met with where we actually have a severe weather threat in the forecast. Every time since the beginning of school, all of my school visits have been with really quiet weather. This is the first time that we're going to have potentially dangerous weather for tomorrow. So I want to talk about that. So first of all, our forecast for tomorrow, the big threat, if you can find where spring branches in Houston, you're in that threat. There is a threat for tornadoes tomorrow. Now that's a really wide area and what happens is usually we get one or two like we did back the last time we had a threat like this which was January 2020, January 24th of this year. It was a tornado outbreak that featured five different tornadoes. This one that this driver got while he was driving was an EF3 with 140 mile per hour winds. It was a thousand yards wide. That's 10 football fields. It started in Pearland, went through Pasadena and Deer Park, and ended in Baytown. Do you see how this tornado is kind of tough to see? It's not a classic tornado that you see in your school books, and the reason is this is what's called a rain-wrapped tornado. So there was rain everywhere, so it was actually really difficult to see where this tornado is, but you can kind of make it out from this video that this guy shot. But again, this was the tornado outbreak the last time we had a weather pattern like this. So I wanna to get to how I forecast the weather. So first of all, I use radar. I use satellite, which will show me where the snow is, where the rain is, where the clouds are. We have recording station, which shows me where the temperatures are. These kids here are gonna be able to tell you what the humidity is right now, what the temperature is right now, what the wind speed is. So I do all of that to record, or excuse me, to tell you what the weather is. And then I also, with the radar, what's very important is what the radar tells me about storms. And so tomorrow, if there are tornadoes, if I see an image like this, that's what's called a hook echo, and that is a radar indicated tornado, a hook echo. So when you look at what's called radar velocity, so you guys are third and fourth and fifth graders, so this is kind of advanced, but that's okay. Can someone help me in the front row? I just need you to hold the story. Come on up. Okay, so I'm gonna be the radar. What's your name? Brooks. Brooks, everyone say hi to Brooks. Hi. Brooks is holding, well he's holding a ball, but this is gonna be representing what's called a hydrometer. So I'm a radar. So what a radar does is it goes around like this and it's scanning the sky for objects. So when the radar goes by and it sees this ball, it hits the ball, the hydrometer, and it comes back to me and it says, you're hitting something, which could be rain. This is large though, but if I'm going like this, I don't know it's large. Our radar beams also go like this. So this is what's called dual pole radar. So when it hits this, it tells me it's this big. And so when it hits this and it comes back to me, it's telling me this is a baseball sized piece of hail. But that's looking at hydrometers. So Brooks, thank you so much, I appreciate it. What it also does is it looks at the wind. It can't see the wind, right? Wind is invisible. Can anyone see this wind? No, did you feel it? Yes. Yes, you felt it. Did you feel this? Yes. You feel it, but you can't see it. Well, radar can actually sense wind also. So what you're looking at up here is you're looking at red is our winds moving toward the radar, green is moving away, and do you see where they come together in a hook? Yeah. 
that is a radar indicated tornado. So before what I showed you that hook was rain, is showing rain, this is showing winds. How about another one? This is what's called correlation coefficient. Again, you learn this a lot in high school or college um, science class or meteorology. But what I'm telling you here is that radar also sees things in the air. So this image to your left is all the rain that's out in Deer Park. Do you see that blue ball on the same image to the right? That is looking at objects in the air. So it's not looking at things like this. It's looking at trees. It's looking at branches. It's looking at pieces of houses. So that is telling me that something's flying in the air that's bigger than a baseball sized piece of hail. Let me give you an example. This is what the Deer Park tornado damage looked like. So it knocked over a, tr a, tr a train. So again, how strong are those winds? a lot stronger than this. This, do you see that shed? That would be picked up by correlation coefficient. So that's what's flying through the sky. So my job as a meteorologist, I'm seeing the rain, but I'm also looking for what's dangerous out there. And on this day in January, 20, in January 24th, it was picking up things that were flying through the air like a shed. And then this is the damage that it did on the ground. And so this is what it looks like. If this video plays, it might not play because we had some uh, problems uh, showing this uh, when it was going on and I don't think it's gonna play. But basically this video, if you could see it, would show what the tornado looked like as it went over this building. And you just basically see a bunch of trees and debris flying all over the place. So it doesn't look like it's gonna play. Anyway, tornadoes. At home, go into a small hallway, a small room away from windows. So if you have an interior bathroom or something, that's the safest place to be because most of the tornadoes that we get aren't monster tornadoes that are gonna tear your whole house down. If you're at school, do what your teacher says and stay calm. So if this happens tomorrow, just so you know, we are in the worst place in the world for a tornado. <laughs> do you see this? All this. Imagine a big tree hitting that and then a tree breaks the window. And then all of a sudden the glass is flying around. And then we're all in here and glass is hitting us. And are the winds stronger than this? Yes. So it's throwing all kinds of stuff at us. So we're in a bad place. So the teachers have already prepared and they know that, hey, if you're in here and there's a tornado warning, we're getting out of here. And we're going into a room that doesn't have windows. So that's the first thing. In fact, when I first started here a long time ago, I am so old, but a long time ago, there was a tornado that hit in Sugarland, And the teacher it was almost similar like this. The teacher, or actually the principal, she was sitting in her office and she saw a tornado across the parking lot coming to her school. So she got on the intercom and she told all the teachers, do what you're supposed to do or whatever the, they said. And all the teachers got everybody away from windows, got them in their safe place, got the kids on their desk, covered their heads, and the tornado went right through the library. Bricks were everywhere. I went by afterwards and saw the bricks thrown around. Glass was everywhere, and books were thrown around everywhere. And it was a, it was a mess. It was really, really awful. And you know how many people got hurt? Well, two people got hurt, but not even bad. The two people that got hurt, one got cut with their arm because they were covering themselves, they got hit with like, like a brick or something and needed four stitches. And the other one just got cut in the arm also, but didn't even need stitches. But nobody else got hurt. And I asked the teacher, or the principal, and I said, how in the world did nobody get hurt? This, is, this mess is everywhere. And she said, I'll tell you what, Anthony, all the kids, they remained calm. They did exactly what the teachers told them to do. No kid was running around, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. She said nobody was like that. Everybody stayed calm, they got in their safe place, and it was all good. So tomorrow, if something like this happens, listen to your teacher and stay calm. Don't be that, that weird kid running away. Um, this is another picture from, uh, let's see, two, two years ago, January, January 9th, same time. Did you know tornadoes are most common in what's called the cold season, where we are right now? End of spring, winter time. When it's cold, that's when we, where we live, get most of our tornadoes. Um, but this is the kind of damage you get. Um, most of the tornadoes we get, now last year they were stronger, or January they were stronger, but most of them that we get are EF0s or EF1s. They go 65 to 85 miles per hour, 86 to 109 miles per hour. Again, this is like four miles per hour. That is not strong, but you feel it. Imagine that, how much stronger is that wind? So how do tornadoes form? 
What's interesting about tornadoes is you need just the perfect environment to get tornadoes. It's really tough actually to make a tornado because you need an atmosphere that is in perfect balance. And it all starts, first of all, with strong winds aloft and then a different direction at the ground. So you need what's called wind shear. So that's wind coming this way, wind coming this way, and so you have a mixing of the winds. So do you see how it makes a tube? And then you also need an updraft, a violent updraft. So you need the wind going like that. And then you'll get the tornado. And if everything works out, you get the little, there's your hook echo again, do you see that? And you've got the tornado. So it has a lot to do with a football. What happens is with the winds, who's good at catching? Me. So it has to be a good kid with catching. You're not gonna drop, it's not gonna hit your nose, right? I'm not gonna break your nose. Stand up, and we're gonna do it real soft. Okay, get over there. Go farther away, stop. Okay, watch the, the, the way the ball moves. Do you see the twisting? Throw it back to me. You can, yeah. Well, okay, no, it's gotta be like this. Okay, throw it to me. You can pass if you want, if it's easier to pass. Well, okay, that's not the way. So now we're gonna pass. Do you see the twisting? Now, let's see, good throw. It's hard, that's a big ball. But do you see, if, if, if the winds go like that, there's no tornado. If the winds go like that, do you see what happens? Now what happens, good job, give me, give me five, good job. What happens is, it starts like this, but then the winds go like this. And then you get a tornado that forms. Does everybody see how that works? You got your wind shear, you have your updraft, and then that's where your tornado forms. And out ahead of that is where you have the rain and hail. Does everyone understand how the wind shear works like a football? It's the spinning, it's a spinning wind, and it has to be perfect, because you saw that other throw and that was not perfect, right? Okay. <coughs> High and low pressure have to do a lot with storms. So first of all, we've had high pressure and control for a few days, and when you have high pressure and control, today's not a good example, but air has weight. So high pressure sinks the air. It is hard to get an updraft when you have high pressure sinking the air. Low pressure is light, so it's really easy. If there's a twisting wind, to lift that wind and create a tornado. I need two people to help me with this. Okay, come on up, yes you, and I need a girl right there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice weight with high pressure. So this is high pressure. High pressure sinks the air. Low pressure is light and it lifts. So what's your name? Maggie. Maggie, everyone say hi to Maggie. Hi Maggie. So here's high pressure. High pressure on a day like yesterday, sinks the air and it's perfectly sunny. So try to make, create some lift. Lift that up, straight up, Maggie, just straight up. Go ahead, straight up, straight up. No, no go to the side, straight up. What's, ha what's happening, why is that so hard? Go ahead and stop. Why is that so hard? It's hard because why? Because the pressure. Yes, high pressure is so heavy here. It's heavy, it has weight, that it's not allowing any lifting. Okay, let's try, you try, what's your name? Hoyt. Hoyt? Okay, Hoyt, try to lift that. Go straight up, don't go to an angle. Do you see, Hoyt, can you lift it? No. Can't lift it. So that high pressure is heavy. And you can't, I mean, I, I can't lift that. So an example, if there was low pressure, it comes straight up. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. So high pressure is heavy, low pressure is light. On a day like tomorrow, guess what we have? An area of low pressure moving in. All we need is wind shear and instability and we've got a tornado. It's the flood threat. We also have a flood threat for tomorrow. We've seen images like this, haven't we? The number one lesson is don't play in flooded water. You're gonna drown. Yes, and here's the thing. Can I be honest with you guys? I have a really bad job when it comes to sad news. If you don't like bad news, do not get into media. Because there's a lot of sad news, and one of the things I hate, honestly, is when we report stories about kids your age, third, fourth, and fifth grade, that bad things happen because you guys are playing in flooded water. Oh, let me get back to this picture. Do you see the, what's going on here? Now, I'll start by saying nothing bad happened, but here is a kid hanging out the window. 
Here's a kid recording it all, whether it's for Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever, YouTube. There's two, do you see that there's two kids hydroplaning on the back of that in white, and the water is white, and there's a car behind them? There's a million things that can go wrong here. There's nothing that went wrong, but please don't play in flooded water. It's incredibly dangerous. Now, on the other end of the scale, not as dangerous, but painful, what is this a picture of? Usually third, fourth, and fifth graders get this easy. Kindergartners, first graders have a hard time seeing what this is. Yes, what is it? Fire ants. Fire ants, good job. So ants are like me, ants don't like getting wet. And so what they do is the very unimportant ants get at the very bottom of the pile and they, look, they attach arms or tentacles or whatever. The ones that are a little more important get on top, the ones that are a little more important get on top. And then at the very top is the queen and who else is important to the ants? The eggs, they get on top too. Um, and so if you do that, it hurts, right? If you're going, if you're, you become an island all of a sudden if you're playing in flooded water and you go over an ant pile. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I do my job and then we'll have you guys do this. So if perfect, we're all set. Are you guys ready to see your classmates do the weather? Yes. Okay, so how I do my job is usually I'm in front of a green screen. Um, what our friends are going to do is they're going to do the weather for their school, their city. They're going to give the current temperatures. They're going to talk about the threats that we have here tomorrow and then what we can see with the weather on Friday. So are you guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. We're going to switch on over. Here we go. What's your name? Lily. Lily. Okay, Lily, I'm going to have you introduce yourself. You are going to start. So remember, this looks different now. When this screen changes and it puts the map behind you, mm -hmm. you know what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, I'm going to see if I can get, where did my buddy go? Okay, we're going to see if we can get everyone to watch you. So when you see this camera change, you're good to go. So it hasn't, the uh, camera hasn't switched yet. So Lily, you're live. So imagine me being on TV right now and waiting like that. Oh my gosh, it's the worst. Okay, so Lily, if you want to tell a story, you can tell a story. If you have one. Oh, there you go. Okay, you're set. Now, Lily, wait for them to put you up. So you're good. You, they got the graphics up. Oh, they went away. But when they go to the graphics and you, you're ready to start. It looks like they're having a little issue um, to switch over. But once they get that taken care of, you are good to go. There you go. Oh, they're, they're, they're try boy, they're trying. They, okay, they're, yeah, they're really trying, but they haven't been able to do both yet. Um, let me go ahead and put the audio real fast. Okay, once that's done. And then I'll let you take care of that. All right, Rain, do you know what's going on? So it looks like. I wonder what's happening. We've never had we've never had this problem before. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna have you go ahead and do it, mm -hmm. even though you can't see yourself. So we're just gonna have you do the weather and we'll go from there. Okay? Okay, okay so go ahead. I, do, I don't think they're gonna be able to chroma key you in, but well, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, she looks good, doesn't she? Alright, go ahead. My name is Lily. Today's forecast is 50 degrees, the humidity chance is 40, 74% that we have with light winds. The, there's tornado threats in the spring, in the Bunker Hill area for tomorrow. There's a flood risk for tomorrow with, that could flood so, and don't play outside. What to expect for the next three days? Wednes today we are having 66, 66 degrees. Thursday, 72 degrees with a low of 60. Friday, 68 degrees with a low of 64. Everyone give her a big round of applause.
Um, is, does Todd have the right thing up? Does he have the right thing up, the double? Does he have the double, the, the chroma key up? Excellent job. And okay, just a big lesson for you guys. So in TV, things go wrong sometimes. So the, every time we've done this, we've been able to see the person doing it as well as the maps. This is the first time there's been problems, but when there's problems and you're live because we're live right now, you just keep going. And so that's how it is. So good job. Okay, let's have the next person come up and I'm, I'm hoping they're working on this. It's really easy. All they're doing is putting a chroma key on. So I'm not sure why, but it might be, that's why I wanna make sure with Todd that he does have the talent with the, with the chroma key on. So I wanna make sure we're good. Yep, there we go. Okay, you got it, you're set. I'm gonna get out of the way, it's all you now. Okay, so hello, my name is Freddie McKenzie and the temperature for, I can't see. Um, <laughs> okay, the temperature is going to be 50 Fahrenheit, 74% humidity, and, um, next, next slide. Okay, we have tornado threats. Some of it's high, some of it's not high. You can see the thing. You can see, like, <laughs> where it's going to be. Okay, next. We have flood risks. Not a lot of flood risks, but we still have flood risks. So, be careful. Next one. <laughs> okay, what to expect for the next three days? Wednesday, which is today, we have 66 degree, no, 66 Fahrenheit. I, I can't say. But, okay, um, we have um, 72 Fahrenheit and then high chances of rain, like big high chances. So if you, if you come this way, you can see your maps. Yep, okay, there you go. Perfect, right, oh. right, oh. 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 there, okay. Oh, yay! <laughs> oh no, too much, too much. Okay, so then on Friday we have 68 Fahrenheit and 64% humidity, I think. Good job, yay! Oh, good goodbye, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, people who are watching me. That was entertaining. Era, big round of applause. So I have this on a delay so you guys can see how they do and then you guys can see yourself. Okay, come on up. We got our next person up. All right, you know what you're doing. Yeah. And then let me just make sure you can see and you're good to go. Okay. Hi, my name is Olivia and I'm a fifth grader at Bunker Hill Elementary. Today, right now in Houston, we have sunny skies with 50 percent with 50 degrees our humidity is 74 percent we have a severe threat for tornadoes tomorrow <laughs> um as you can see in spring branch <laughs> we have a flood risk tomorrow in also in spring branch so just be careful um, what to expect the next two days. For Wednesday, we have, for, well, aka today, we have partly cloudy skies with a high of 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, tomorrow, we have 72 degrees as a high and 60 degrees for a low with rainy skies. On Friday, we have partly cloudy skies with 68 degrees Fahrenheit as a high and 64 degrees as a low. Yay! Bye. Good job! Good job! Okay. Go ahead. I, since we didn't get to see you, we're going to have you do it again, which means you've had a lot of practice, okay? So here we're going to have you do it. And so we got everything set up for you. So everybody gets to see you. Okay, you're good. Perfect. Okay. Again, my name is Lily and. The degrees is 50, and there's a 74% chance of humidity and pretty light wind. Severe, th severe threat tomorrow for t thunder for tornadoes. As you can see, it's going it's going to be there. So. Don't play outside tomorrow. No, don't do it. Flood risk tomorrow, so be not playing outside unless you want to drown, okay?
for the next three days, to expect on today, 66 degrees. Thursday, except 72 degrees and a low of 60. On, on Friday, no, on Friday, it's six, 68 degrees and a low of 64. <laughs> Yay, good job. Hey, you guys, come on on up. We have a couple minutes left. So we're going to interview you. And then you can watch. Come on up over here with me. So did you notice the, the toughest part for them was where to stand? Because when you're brushing your teeth at home and, and you're, you're doing, doing this, this, the, the toothbrush, toothbrush is over here. here. They all had a hard time. Did you notice when they wanted to move that way, they moved this way? Because if you're brushing your teeth on TV, your toothbrush is now over here. So you're flipped. So the hardest part, didn't you guys think, was being able to know exactly what you were looking at and what to see. What did you think of your experience? Hard. It was hard, really. So that's honestly, for my job, the hardest part is that. And once you get it, it's easy after that. What did you think? I loved it. You loved it. You did great. And Mr. Personality over here, I mean, this guy's got a future. I mean, you're going to see him on Late Night pretty soon. But what did, what did you think? It was radical. Okay. So tell me something, because in this whole time, there's been only three people who've been incredibly comfortable. You were one of them. We had a thespian who was in acting class who just knocked it out of the park. And then you were just, you were like, it's like the camera's always on you. So where did you get that from? Uh, I really don't know. I have no, I have no clue. <laughs> oh, that's great. And again, you can kind of see what it looks like for the end. We have about one minute left, guys. So in one minute, do you have one weather question that we can get done in a minute before we all say goodbye? Yes, come on up. Really quick. We've got one minute. Come on, you got to come quick. Yes. Quick. quick, quick, quick. I love your Bunker Hill shirt. It was established when? 1956. Oh my gosh. And it's so new outside. It's brand new. It's beautiful. Okay, what's your question? Um, I heard that the most place that gets the most tornadoes is a place called Tornado Alley. Yes, now that's a great question. Tornado Alley gets the most tornadoes. But did you know, and Tornado Alley is like in the Midwest, did you know recently that's changed? And it's now moved more to the southeastern United States. So Tornado Alley is not really the most where you get the most tornadoes. It's actually now near us and off to the east. So it's moved off to the southeastern United States. Are you guys all ready? That's a great question. Good job. Are you guys all ready to say goodbye to our live audience? Yeah. No, you're not ready? Hey, oh, I have to say one last thing when they give us a countdown. You guys were the best group as far as being quiet and letting listening. No other group has ever been able to listen to hear their words because you guys were so great at being quiet and just really being attentive to everything. So that's great. 10 seconds left. Can you guys all say goodbye? Yeah.